an English Guardiola Tigana hybrid or a desperate claim by United to have produced a Seydorf regen. Just how good is Kobe Mainu? Look, it wouldn't be unlike Casemiro to make a foul in that sort of situation, let's be honest. But that's not right. It didn't look like he touched. If we look at Mainu's possession stats, we can see that right now his pass volume is low. His age has to be factored into account, as well as the team he's playing for. United are not renowned for their midfield dominance, and thus it'd be very difficult to expect a United CM, especially a young one, to be hitting register numbers where he's hitting 70 odd passes a game. If we look at his forward passes ratio, it's closer to an Enzo Fernandez than a Rodri type player. Mainu is a naturally progressive player. One out of three of his passes, he's looking to do something with it. And at youth level, it's incredible how he wriggles out of the press and finds the right pass to inject forward momentum into the attacking phase. Very rarely is he a player that makes the wrong pass to the wrong player. Great feel for the flow of the game and the positioning of his teammates and the opposition. It's innate within him. Now, one of the issues of Mainu's game is his lack of natural dynamism. He has been criticised by Ten Hag as being too static. And we can see that in terms of the passes received, he falls way behind the other midfielders in the stats. He isn't getting on the ball enough. And at times that can lead to him fading out of the game. And he's reduced to moments of great quality rather than sustained control of proceedings. Now that raises question marks. Is he a player who could be that elite register in the future? Much depends on his physical development over the next five years. Can he assert himself on proceedings more? And again, the other factor that plays into that is, can United tactically develop enough in the possession stake under the new Ineos era? From an eye test point of view, Mainu has ridiculous IQ for one so young. I wouldn't say he's quite Cesc Fabregas, but he's one of the most intelligent young CMs I've seen in terms of the maturity of his decision making. The pauser on the ball before finding the little opening to slot passes through, knowing which technique to apply when striking at the right time. It's gorgeous to watch. Now, there's a reason why City were looking at him as a youngster because the most impressive aspect of his possession game is that press resistance in tight spaces or situations of extreme pressure. He can chest aerial balls down when surrounded. He can pick it up in the pivot role and not be flustered. England just don't produce many midfielders who are comfortable in the build-up phase and Mainu is a rare breed oh, in that respect. Some bad language of the crowd, very close proximity for the spectators to the pitch here at Kenilworth Road. That's lovely for... Moving on to his dribbling, if we look at Mainu's dribbling stats, we can see that it forms a key component of his game. He does it at high frequency, but how often is he actually breaking the lines with it and progressing the game in a meaningful sense? Compared to a Kaiseido, we can see that Mainu too picks it up in deeper areas, but in terms of net impact, well, he isn't influencing the game majorly with his running with the ball at this moment in time. From the eye test, we can see that he's very economical with his dribbling. He's a biomechanical dream. He looks so balanced and tight in his stride, great footwork, great glide, but does he lack explosive power? He's been likened to Clarence Seydorf, but the Dutchman was a freak of nature even his younger days, really, really athletic, covered every blade of grass. I don't see that same natural physical spark in Mainu. He can pick and choose his moments to run with the ball, but I don't think he could run the opposition ragged with his running with the ball time and time again in the men's game, especially as a number 10 type midfielder. Hence, the deeper role makes a bit more sense, where it's a bit more about breaking through oncoming opponents rather than taking the game to an opponent who happens to be physically powerful, disciplined and sitting deep. Nevertheless, in terms of natural feel with the ball at feet, the ability to shield it, the ability to manipulate it even when there's lots of traffic, Mainu has generational comfort with the ball. He's the most technically gifted English central midfielder I've seen since Paul Scholes in terms of that ball carry. And his range of skills is quite Brazilian-esque. He reminds me a little bit of Didi. Foot rolls, chops, outside of the foot when men are on his back, nutmegs. It feels like Mainu has an instinctive feel for which trick to use and when to use it. He doesn't force it. It all looks very natural. For penalty area. Dallo across and it's 2-0. Swept in by Kobe Mainu. What a start. To Whilst that goal against Wolves undoubtedly took the breath away, the truth is that statistically, Mainu is not really beating down the door from a goal-scoring perspective. Now, his youth coaches say that Mainu was a player that was very comfortable in front of goal. And you can see that the stats have his shooting accuracy as low, but the eye test suggests a player who's quite measured with his strikes. His placement seems to be solid, especially with the finesse technique along the ground. 
But for me, the big issue seems to be sharp power. He doesn't really have a howitzer in his locker that he can unleash from range regularly. And this is where the comparisons to a Seydorf type player fall flat. I'd say most goal scoring midfielders of pedigree have a great shot from range, as in theory, they need to be able to shoot from outside the box more than a striker would. So if you haven't really got that in your locker, it can really diminish your overall goal threat, even if you are rather composed in and around the box. And I guess it comes down to whether Mainu develops those thick legs which can allow him to shoot from distance as his career progresses. Nevertheless, he's a head-up footballer, senses the flow of the attack well, and he joins in at the right time. A bit like a McAllister currently for Liverpool, so players of that ilk will always find moments where they can be goal threats and they can take opposition by surprise. I just don't see Mainu as the number 10 style cam where he takes on that pressure of being the main goal threat from midfield, kind of like what you're seeing from Jude Bellingham now at Real Madrid. I don't think he's explosive enough to handle that level of marking attention. But as a supplementary goal threat, he can for sure hit a minimum of 5-10 to 10 goals a season and get some key goals when the team needs it most. Toby Mano picking out Garnacho. From a creative perspective, Mainu is not a high volume creator and even during his youth games, he wasn't really utilised as the team's main creative influence. But what he does possess is a fantastic mind for the through ball, he's got great spatial awareness and that allows him to slot through balls with consummate ease and unlock defences. Very Fabregas-esque in that sense, who would join in from deep and even when on the ball carry have that calmness of mind to find that killer pass and not get too emotional while he's running with the ball. Now in truth, we haven't really seen this side of Mainu's game since his transition into the first team. But I think once he grows more comfortable at this level, he will start to showcase more of his creative side and highlight just how excellent the weight of his passing can be. We saw briefly in the recent City game that outside of the foot pass to Garnacho, it was almost inch perfect and a game-changing moment. So I suspect that this will become more of a trademark feature of Mainu's game once he becomes established in the men's game. Overall, I'd say he's more of a McAllister Iniesta type player where these type of players they look for the perfect moment to hit a through ball they don't really have a machine gun approach where they're constantly trying to break the opposition down and that can lead to variances in terms of how accurate their passing can be and get a high amount of assists I think he's more of a perfectionist waiting for that right moment Moving on to Mainu's long pass, his stats look mediocre in this respect, but it's worth noting that in youth football, his accuracy was hovering closer to 60%. So what is the real potential here and what can the eye test tell us? The eye test suggests that Mainu has solid long ball fundamentals, the technique looks relatively clean, he can hit a lace pass switch pretty well, especially out to the right flank, but I wouldn't say there's anything groundbreaking in this respect. In terms of his vertical passing, Due to his vision and IQ, I think there's potential here, untapped potential for him to use long passing in a manner which could open up defences. Again, we haven't seen a large volume of this yet and I don't suspect that it will form a regular part of his game as he's naturally more inclined to a short passing type of game. But I wouldn't be surprised if he pulls off, you know, game breaking long passes which no one saw coming. His lofted passes over the top over more medium distances whilst on the run are excellent and a standout feature of his youth games. Dirty to Barkley, nice feet, but Mado was there to unsettle him. He can't hold on to it, Kobe. One of the most impressive features of Mainu's game since he's moved into the men's game has been his defensive play. Lauded as a naturally attacking player whilst coming through the academy, his thoughtfulness when fulfilling his defensive duties has been commendable. Now, despite the criticism of the lack of pitch coverage intensity, with regards to Mainu, he does get through a lot of defensive work. And it seems that most of this takes place slightly higher up the pitch or in the heart of the midfield battle. But more importantly, we can see that Mainu has a range of defensive ploys that he can use to his advantage. In and around the box, he can be patient, waiting for the right time to intercept. He isn't afraid to track a player back and put in a slight tackle. And he can clear inside the box and sense danger. In close quarters, he's particularly solid. I'd say in terms of weaknesses, once he's pressed, he can find it difficult to get back and track, getting out sprinted. I wouldn't say that's a discipline issue. I'd say it's more of a sprint endurance issue and he can get overrun. Once again, highlighting his deficiency from an athletic perspective. Similarly, it means that he's caught out of position in the recovery phase 
And that's why I'm not entirely convinced of his future as a sole holding midfielder and why I think he needs defensive support in that midfield region. His close quarters defending is good, but defending over large areas of space over 90 minutes, I'd say it's a bit more questionable how good he is. Hey guys, wondering what software we use to produce the state-of-the-art Telestration graphics software on this video? Download Play by Metrica Sports, the essential tool for every coach and analyst. Use the link in the description to access Metrica's website and then apply the code Pythagoras in Boots at the checkout for a 10% discount. If the Manchester United defence could be rattled a little bit here, but it's been steady so far from Eric Ten Hag's side. In terms of his heading, statistically, Mainu is getting involved in the air a fair amount, but with his lack of physical presence and his immaturity, it's understandable that he isn't exactly going to be an aerial beast. I'd say 41% is, if anything, a respectable success rate for a regista type player, but I'd say it's a concerning figure if he's to be used as the sole holding midfielder. And the reason for that is from goal kicks, long free kicks, the holding midfielder is usually the first shield in dealing with that. And that's why players like Fabinho, Rice, Rodri, they're worth their weight, especially in English football. In terms of the timing of the leap, the technical side of heading, in open play, I wouldn't say Mainu is that bad, but he's not really a goal for it. And overall, I find it hard to envisage this particular aspect of his game becoming a major strength of his game, even in his prime. But I wouldn't say he necessarily has to become a liability either. It's Mainu. It's a rehearse Manchester United move, but... From a crossing perspective, Mainu very subtly picks up great positions out wide, whether he's featuring as a right CM or a left CM. Now, whilst the stats suggest that he's no KDB, personally, I think for a deepish mid, his wide play shows decent promise. I don't think his crossing technique is spectacular by any means. And in that sense, I wouldn't say he's a Douglas Luiz just yet. But he can spot a pass. I just think it's about honing his technique, adding more whip to the cross, knowing which technique to use at the right time and not just lazily chipping the ball in if he really takes this part of his game seriously and makes it important I think it could become a core part of what he offers as an overall midfielder and I reckon it would make him more positionally versatile allowing him to play in the Mazzala type role or in a wide midfield role in a diamond so overall this part of his game is raw but I think there's glimpses of promise which could blossom in the future tactically Mainu has been painted as a midfielder who can do it all. The problem is that it could leave him becoming a jack of all trades and master of none. Seidoff was a player who didn't really live up to his reputation for a number of years, despite undoubtedly being a world-class player, as he didn't really know what was his best position, especially in the national team. So he saw tremendous highs and then lows before he finally really cemented his status as an infallible icon in that fluid AC Milan side. It was hard to categorise what type of player Seidoff was. And Mainu would want to avoid that because Seidoff kind of got away with it by the end, but he was a one-of-a-kind type of footballer. Mainu for me would be better off if he understands what player he wants to be sooner rather than later and kind of sticks at it. Being too versatile can have its drawbacks, especially when you come out of those teenage years and you want to start to cement yourself as a first-team spinal component for an elite side. At the moment, I feel like his most standout attribute is his comfort in the build-up phase. So if I was to focus on a role right now, it would be as a deep-lying playmaker, but making sure that he's given plenty of defensive support and pitch coverage next to him, which allows him that freedom to roam forwards if he needs to. In the longer term, United would hope that he becomes more of a regista type of player, someone who can control proceedings slightly higher up the pitch, closer to the centre circle, and run the game. For me, the development of his athleticism is key here. Registers are often mischaracterised as being slow, soft immobile players whose intelligence allows them to control proceedings but for me the likes of Cruz rack up an insane amount of passes per game because their endurance is overlooked they're capable of consistent and continuous little movements off the ball which allows them to constantly find space and keep things moving and ticking Mainu needs to prove that he doesn't fade out of games and that he can maintain that level of movement throughout a 90 minutes if he can add that to his game, then he's definitely got the IQ and the technique to run games at a high level. I think if he was to drastically improve his physique and become a more explosive player, then you could even see him thrive in that wider midfield role that we spoke of before. But again, all of this is hypotheticals, so we need to see what Mainu looks like by the time he's 23 
to make a more educated, accurate prediction. In conclusion, Menu is in terms of sheer IQ, probably one of the best deep lying CMs England has ever produced. But the bar is very low. This is a country that simply struggles to produce footballers who can handle the ball in the build up phase. And Menu is a unicorn in that respect. The big question though is that just because he's a unicorn in the English sense and United for that matter, does it mean he's an actual world level talent? Or is he overhyped because of the lack of his ilk of player based on who he plays for? And it's a tough question to answer because much of it rests on his physical development. Based on his technique, intelligence, you're looking at a special footballer, arguably the missing link in England's midfield and one who could push them over the edge in the big games. For United, he could potentially answer the Regista problem in the long term. But, and it's a big but, if he fails to kick on beyond his current level of explosiveness, he's not really going to hit world class. It's all good being able to play football in velvet slippers, but you need to be able to move often to control games at the highest level. You can't just pick and choose when to get involved. If you're that type of player, then you're basically a supplementary midfielder, not the core component of the midfield unit. The likes of Tigana, Seidorf, they had that athleticism, which was unreal. And then you combine that with their nimbleness and tenacity, it made them very impactful at the highest level. I don't see that type of explosiveness in Mainu, but on the flip side, he's got that glide that Adidi had, where he can leave players for dead with a fleet of foot and superb balance and really influence proceedings without necessarily being explosive. I'd say minimum, he looks like a Champions League level central midfielder. Potentially, he could be generational. Prediction-wise, truth be told, it's an absolute guess because of the unknown physical component. But if I had to gamble on his intelligence and the beauty of his technique, then surely in an ideal setup, you're looking at a potential world-class midfielder. If someone told you he's a young French midfielder coming through, you wouldn't really question it as he looks pretty cultured by global standards. And I don't think he would struggle to grasp Arteta or Guardiola's style of football. So he's definitely a talent. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share and subscribe and see you guys again next time. Bye.